Hello and welcome to the 57th episode of Göz Kararı. Uh, today we have a very special guest. It's Nikos Ekonomopoulos from Magnum Photos. Uh, he's very special to us, uh, because not just because he's from Magnum, but also because he has worked so much in Istanbul, in Turkey, in the Balkans, in our geography. Uh, he tells us so much about our own landscape, our own places. So. Uh, we have, we have a lot to ask you. Uh, you are here for now for your workshop on the road. Workshop. Yeah, yeah. And for a week. For a week. I stay another time for a week in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could start from the workshops and we could, mm -hmm. we'll get back later to Magnum and Istanbul. Uh, you're here for a week, you said, and uh, how... Uh, like, do you, how are these, how do you choose these participants who, the what, who participate in your workshop? Ah, and who they, they participate? Yes. The most of the time they are people not from Turkey. I mean, they come mm -hmm. from other countries, so, oh. from different countries, and it's not important. I mean, sometimes there are some Turks, but not very often. Mm -hmm. And they are, are they like established photographers or are they amateurs? Mm, generally, generally they are very sophisticated amateurs and they want to become better and better. So that's the, that's the point because, I, I mean, <clears throat> the professional photographers, you know, they are very much in a very specific uh, direction from the medium that they represent, you know, I mean, from the newspapers, from the magazines, or from, so they do very specific things. So mm -hmm. I, I don't have much to teach to them, you know. What, uh, what I have to teach is to people that they want to be better photographer. And this, uh, the, most of the time, they're amateur photographers, not necessarily professional photographers. Mm -hmm. Very few they're mm -hmm. professional. Or there are some photographers that they want to become professional, but in a very high level. Mm -hmm. I guess you made a, a special workshop for a long time. No, it's, I mean, what, what I'm concerning, what, what I'm, I'm trying to teach, you know, uh, it's uh, how to make your photography a little bit go in another level. I mean, go to a, a deeper uh, visual uh, uh, approach, you know, it's it's my approach is visual. It's not journalistic. It's not uh, it's not uh, uh, commercial at all. So it's personal and yes, visual. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I would like to ask that. Uh, like, yeah. how do you uh, describe really what you are doing? Because you are not. A I think what I'm doing is uh, it's uh, with uh, <clears throat> it's not journalistic. It's a documentary in a way, mm -hmm. you know. I feel a documentary photographer, but not necessarily a journalist. I don't feel a journalist anymore. I, I never felt a journalist very much, you know, even in the past. But the last uh, 20 years, I don't do things for journalism. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that. But you, uh, you do documentary, but still you have a lot of like single images, right? I mean, you don't yes, really follow yes. a story for me, from For me, the end. story is not very important, especially because I'm interested for the visual part of the, of the photograph, you know? I mean, I like a photograph that is it's, it's complete. It's complete. It, that yes, it's sir. not a part of a story. Mm -hmm. Because the, most of the time when you see a story, you see one or two good pictures and all the rest are very mediocre pictures. Mm -hmm. and that, it works, I mean, in that way. The magazines, they work in that way. The books, they work in that way sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the, the exhibitions, they work in that way. So they do a couple of good photos and all the rest is it's not good. But so what I try is to every picture to be autonomous and to be a complete photograph, a complete visual um, element, you know? Okay. But still, yeah. somehow, the, uh, all the photos in your books, like the yeah. Balkans, they somehow work together very well. How, how, do, you, how do you... Probably, proper, I, I, it's not me the right person to say, to, to say something like this, but I think has to do with... Uh, there is a, a common uh, way of seeing things. Mm -hmm. So I think this is in common. This is what you see through all the pictures. I mean, maybe it's something from me, so it's personal, you know. It's do you do your own editing for your own books? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I always do my editing, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody else. Uh, sh should we get help from <coughs> photo editor or another photographer? No, no. I, I, sometimes I ask opinion, but, uh, but um, <coughs> I think from the beginning, when I was a very young photographer, 
I always like to do my own editing, and I think I'm good in that. I think because many good photographers, very good photographers, much better than me, they need the help from editor. I, I never felt that need, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to ask the opinion. I like to have the opinion of people that I like and people that I respect, you know, but it doesn't, the, most of the time they agree with me, these people. So I, um, I don't really need their opinion, you know, I mean, to, 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 to follow my, my instinct because I work only with instinct, you know, not with logic or with, uh, that's why I don't do stories. Mm -hmm. It's because my instinct is the most uh, is the machine that uh, that that brings me on, you know, brings me. What about the sequencing then of all these images? The sequencing, it's uh, the most of the time. It's uh, I mean, my criteria are <coughs> mostly is visual. I mean, it can, it's it's very boring when you put one picture after the other and they look about the same. So you have to to find a way to do a kind of story, but in the same time to have a visual, um, let's say, uh, they have to be different pixels. I mean, to be the same, same in the same feeling, but different, you know, not, not repetitive. You know, this repetition is my, my enemy. You know, I feel, I feel very much um, against this uh, repetitive thing, you know, so I try to have, be in the same style, in the same feeling, but in the same time not repetitive. So it's not easy sometimes. But you know? not necessarily in the same place where the story no, is happening. No, not the same place. But because the, since you're doing documentaries, still you're in the boundaries of documentary. Uh, you don't yeah, with, feel a, with a very vague uh, idea of documentary. You know, I don't. I don't uh, try to to describe hundred percent a place. You know, what I try to describe it's uh, my my pass us from that place, you know, my, my passing from that place. So it's it's not so descriptive, you know. Description is just a small part of my photography, I think. Mm -hmm. And you said... I always try, and I think many photographers, they try to do that, to go over the description. And this is not easy anymore. It's very difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't, I mean, describe something, but in the same time, what is important, and you can feel it, is not the description, it's something else. It's not easy to talk too much about that, you know. So it's Believe like me. feeling with visuals. Uh, I think it's. <clears throat> I mean, photography is something very magical for me. From one side, it's uh, the representation of reality, but from the other side, it's very far from the reality. Reality is not is not the main characteristic of photography, from my point of view. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's real what you saw, but in the same time. It's not the truth. Mm -hmm. Photography can tell us the truth, uh, or manipulate it. Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I think photography say the truth of the photographer. Not not so much about what happened in front of his lens. You know, what happened in front of his lens. It's very subjective. You know, it's the opinion of the photographer about that place. So this is, it's a, it's a. It's very easy to misunderstanding all that, you know, because w when you are in a place, for example, look what, what the newspapers they are doing, you know. They put in the first page a photograph for something, for an event. Mm -hmm. And after they pretend that everybody believes what is there. But it's not the truth there. It's just the, the idea of the newspaper about the event. So it's the context as well yes. in which we... Of course, pictures. of course. I mean, why you choose this part and not that one and not that one and what, when you do it, I mean, in which moment you do that and not in 10 minutes later or 10 minutes after or before. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's very... The only thing that you can do as a photographer is just to be honest with yourself, you know? I mean, to, to, to show what you think is your personal truth. This is much more close to the truth. And in your case, you are in a unique position uh, that you get to choose your own images for you because you're doing your own projects, your own books. Yeah. And that's the, also the, basically the idea of Magnum, of course, but still working for magazines and newspapers. Yeah, but me, you see, I, I don't limited. consider myself, I, I, I don't, I'm not uh, an assignment photographer. Mm -hmm. That's why, for example, the last years I teach a lot, you know, because I don't really like to get assignments. I'm not mm -hmm. very happy. I'm very anxious, you know, because the, most of the time, the people in the magazines, they choose the wrong, the, the, I mean, for me, the worst pictures, not necessarily the best. 
So for me, the best is different. It's not the same as the opinion of the magazine. So I prefer don't do many assignments. You know, I do it only when I, I can't say no. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes I have to do it. But the most of the time, I prefer don't do it. I, that, that's why I prefer to teach. You know, I feel much more free when I teach. Mm -hmm. I'm much more honest with myself. That's, that's what I try to say. Uh, one of my Turkish photographer friends said to me, uh, Nikos generally do not follow any composition rules or advice. Uh, he creates his own structure and his photos is not only structural, uh, but it means context and meaning. I don't know what he means because in my mind, uh, I follow some composition rules, but I never think about them. I never think. I mean, think too. Yeah. It's instinctively, yeah. exactly. I mean, I, I just follow my instinct. I mean, there are some examples, for example, in my photographic uh, evolution, that uh, when I did the photograph, I was, I knew that it's correct, you know, but with academic rules, it was not correct at all. Mm -hmm. But I was, in that moment, in that specific instant, when I did that photograph, I knew that will be a good photograph, and after, 25 years, I still believe that that photograph is still good. And it's completely out of any academic rules. Okay. So I think what I learn through my photography for myself is to follow my instinct. I think this is the most safe way to, to be happy with my photography. Because otherwise, if I start to think how the, the academic rules on composition or, or on content and everything, it's it's, it's a result of thinking. The result is never interesting, you know? It's very boring. Yes. So I never do it anymore. I never Think, do it. Yes, thinking usually doesn't work while shooting, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, you have something else in your mind when you shoot, and after the result, it's really boring. It's nothing, you know? It's not interesting. So I never think too much. Maybe I think when I edit, in terms of uh, to create something that is not repetitive, you know, it's nice to go, it's a, it's a nice uh, sequence mm -hmm. in visual terms or in content terms, but not necessarily in, uh, as a complete story from the beginning, the middle, and the end. I, I don't think in that, in that level, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think that way. But you said uh, you were good at editing from the beginning, and that's probably... Uh, I said that I, I, I knew how you knew. to choose photographs mm -hmm. that I like. That's mm -hmm. what I mean. And uh, Not editing for magazines, for example. No, no, no it was course. not that. But uh, <clears throat> uh, what about when you started? You have, from the beginning on, you have been working in the Balkans, right? Yeah. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about how that uh, you started shooting in Greece and then moved on to the other countries in the Balkans, or how how did that? Listen, I, when I I start looking to photographs, you know, I was not a photographer. I I study. I was in my middle twenties. I I study uh, law at that time, and I, I bought a lot of books of literature and music and uh, CDs, uh, not CDs, uh, how you call it? Vinyl Vinyls, discs, yes. you know, discs and uh, <laughs> literature books, etc. So one day in a house of a friend of mine in Italy, I found, I saw a small book, you know, mm -hmm. with photographs. And I was amazed because it was so intelligent, those photographs, you know, I never saw photography from that point of view. It was a small book from Cartier-Bresson. Yes. So for me, it was like something like a new window in the world. You know, it was really very, I found it very intelligent and very clever. So I started to buy books. That was my, my, my uh, photography it was not for me to take a camera and go around to photograph. I, I, never, I never did that in the beginning, you know? The only thing that I did, it's in, together with, with music and books, I, I bought photographic books. So I start to have a kind of library in my, in my place with, uh, except the literature books, I had to start to have photographic books. And slowly by slowly, I create a, a photographic culture, I think. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me. I mean, I, I, when I start photographing, I was very well educated visually. That is my case. I mean, okay. from the beginning, when I start photographing, you know, after five years or something like this, from the first day when I saw that book, I knew exactly what I want. I mean, I was very, very, let's say, 
not amateur in a way, you know. I never did these photographs that the amateurs did. Okay, so it was, was the images very specific. first from the beginning on. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I still have, I mean, even in this book, I think there are a couple of pictures from the first year of my photography. So it's, uh, you know, the... so it's not, um, um, for me, I, I, I don't have a past of amateur. As an amateur, you know, the typical amateur that makes uh, sunsets and uh, the family photos, I never did that, you know? But it must still be I a never challenge. It must be a challenge for you to see all like likes uh, of Henry Cartier-Bresson and then because my education, my shoot. visual education was that, you know. But when you then when you begin began to shoot, uh, you probably didn't just immediately start shooting great pictures. I mean, there must be some. Um, uh, or how did it work out then? Uh, one part, I mean, a small percentage of my pictures they were good from the beginning, mm, okay. and that happened because, for example, when you start to. For example, if, if somebody wants to become a writer, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, he's, for years he, he read a lot of literature, a lot of things, you know. So when he starts to write, he's much more mature than somebody else who never reads something, you know. Mm -hmm. So in my case, I think my background, my educational background was this visual education through the books. That was my... Uh, I never did a school of photography. I, do, I knew nothing about technique, for example, or about cameras or about anything. I was not interested about this, but I was very much interested about the frame. You know, the frame was very important, and uh, for me, uh, it was so much pleasure when I saw good photographs. You know, and it makes me feel really nice. I get a lot of pleasure when I see from other photographers, you know, good photos. So that was the main the main way, the, let's say the main, uh, how you say when you, <clears throat> um, yeah, the main pleasure was to see good photographs and get that pleasure from, uh, okay. so okay. That, 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 that's my background. I mean, it's not uh, to be in a photographic club and go around to photograph, never did something like mm -hmm. this, you know. I always travel alone, that, uh, all with my, girlfriend or my wife, you know, and, mm -hmm. but never with, uh, I never did things with a group of people or in, uh, in uh, you know, mm -hmm. but still I was you, very much alone. But know? still you uh, sh uh, were shooting in, in your own, in the nearby geography, in, in yeah, Greece. Yeah, for and years, Bali. yeah. Was, it, was this because Probably of... the last 10 years, I don't do that anymore. But was it because of convenience then? Because you in were... the beginning, yes. In the okay. beginning, for example, I came to Turkey because it was cheap for me. Mm -hmm. So I start to, to go around in Turkey because it was very cheap and I spent all my vacation here in the beginning. Okay. So after I start to go to the Balkans for the same reason and uh, in the 90s when the Balkans start to, you know, all the things Open start up, in the yeah. Balkans. So I visit the Balkans because it was very near to me, it was easy. For me it's very important to go, go back in my place and go again, you know, repetitive visiting, you know. It's not enough for me to go for a couple of months in a place and finish, you know. I, I, I create a kind of, of, um, of relation with the place. For example, with Turkey, I came in Turkey more than, more than five years. I came two, three times every year. You know, mm -hmm. I, I travel by car, I travel by motorcycle, I travel with any car, everywhere. You know, I did more than 100,000 kilometers in Turkey, mm -hmm. everywhere. And did so, you have a project in your mind from the beginning? No, no. The only thing I had in my mind is to, to, to leave photography. I mean, to leave and take photographs and get pleasure from that. That was from the first time, from the first day in my mind. It was nothing to do with profession, nothing to do with uh, earning money or be famous, nothing of that. My only concern was just to get pleasure and be in the street and photograph and meet people, you know, and uh, take some good photographs, some bad photographs. You know, the experience of photographing a place. Mm -hmm. that, that was the main, and it's still the same, you know, it's still the same, and I really enjoy it, even now, you know, after 30 years. I still enjoy that, mm -hmm. to, to, to be uh, outside, be free, without any professional restrictions, and uh, play with the reality. That's what I'm doing, I think.
I'm always curious about when I look through your book, uh, yeah. especially the Balkans book, if you see like, uh, I mean, how do you approach it? Do you see like a great big difference of culture in a small geography or you see uh, like small differences in a great geography? Uh, <clears throat> okay, what happened in the beginning was that uh, when I came to Turkey, I felt very, very warm here, you know, very warm. I mean, I found out, uh, for example, I came here around 85, I think, the first time. So I found here, especially in the East, situations and smells and behavior of people that when I was 10 years old, you know, I find again things that they were changed and missing in Greece. Doesn't exist anymore in Greece. So I find it again. So I felt very warm here. So that, that's, that's the feeling of uh, to feel in a, in, a nice, in a nice feeling, you know, in a place. So mm -hmm. if, if I feel like that, I can go to meet people, I can, I can feel the people, I can touch the people, you know, I can interpret the people. So I can make some good photos after all, mm -hmm. you know? It's not the main thing to make. I mean, for me, to do a good photograph, it was a result. It was never, never, uh, it was not in my mind that I, I have to go there to stay for a couple of months and do good photos. You know, it was not that. My main concern was to go there, live the experience of photographing, and maybe in the end I, I, I will have some good photos. Maybe not, you know. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was not so good. But the result, the ex I mean, I remember a case. For example, I saved money for more than five years to go in Spain and Portugal for three, four months, you know. So I saved the money for working for five years. So I've been to Spain. And after the second month, they stole all my films. You can imagine, you know, five years of saving money to do a photographic trip, be there and stole and lose all my pictures. In the first week, I was really, you know, very, pissed very off. bad. Yeah, yeah, pissed yeah. off very much, you know. But after, I start to think that, I mean, all that experience, Nobody can take out of me, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, I, I live through that, and uh, I became a better photographer through that experience. So it's, it's still there, the it's still there, you know? Yeah. It will be better to have the pictures too, but you know, even without, it's not mm -hmm. a big deal, you know? It's not, uh, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I can do something else. But so it's a, it's, a, it's a way to live your life in a better way, mm -hmm. let's say. That's, but, that's what I think about my photography. But, uh, you say you look for, uh, you feel the warmth here, and it sounds also a little bit like looking for the traditions, old traditions. I mean, do, do you not look necessarily, after that? Do not you search necessarily, for that? Not necessarily. Also Maybe I look, I look, you know what I look? It's not old tradition. I mean, for example, for a period of time, I photograph a lot of festivals, you know, mm -hmm. especially in Greece, but mm -hmm. not only. Uh, many people, they thought that I'm, uh, I'm interesting about uh, the traditions and all these uh, popular things, and it's not true. I mean, what, the reason why I visit all these festivals, it was the fact that if you visit a village, for example, mm -hmm. in the day of the festivity, nobody asks you why you do photographs. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. If you go in a place, in a small village, in, just like this, without any, any alibi, Mm -hmm. Everybody asks you and look at you very bad because they don't understand what are you doing. Yes, so I was, I, was, I was choosing the places because the festivities for that reason, because I, I give an alibi to me and to the others to accept me there. Mm -hmm. That's the real, the real yes. story, you know? Okay. It's not the fact, I'm not very much interested about... It's not the about, festival, but no, like no. Yeah. behind the scenes... It's not the festival. Yeah. It's not the fe I'm not very much interested about festivals. But I'm also asking this question because uh, at the same time, we don't see really any photos of cities. Okay, there are pictures yeah. from the cities, but not of the cities. Yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. No, you yeah. you right. don't see any pictures of the modern Istanbul or right. Athens. Right. Right. Because probably I don't like too much, you know? Mm -hmm. Listen. There is a big difference between be a journalist and be a photographer, or as I think about photography. Be a journalist, you have to photograph what happened in a place, you know? Mm -hmm. if, if you are not a journalist necessarily, you can, you can photograph what you like. I mean, why I have to photograph these uh, this, uh, this big buildings and this modern Istanbul, why? 
I'm not interested about that, so I don't like it. I find it ugly. Why I have to photograph? I photograph only what I like. And that's my attitude, you know? It's a question of attitude. Mm -hmm. But if, if a magazine was behind me and pay me to come here, I had to photograph that. I mean, to describe the city. So, but if, if I don't come here because a magazine sent me and I come by myself, I photograph what I like. So that's, it's so simple, I mean. I, I consider myself very lucky that I can, I used to live and photographing without any restrictions, you know, any professional restrictions. So I feel very lucky about that, you know. <clears throat> and uh, then I'd like to ask some pr practical questions, like uh, do you use fixers on the, while you're working? Yeah, most of the Locals, time, no. taking no. you around, translators? No. No, I, I don't need translators. I mean, sometimes if I have a friend, for example, if I, if I meet, for example, I remember uh, once in, uh, <clears throat> I had to go to Urfa for a workshop, and somebody from Urfa wrote me mm -hmm. and said, you know, I saw that you come here and I like to help you. And so I met a guy in Urfa that he helps me a lot, but, you know, I invite him to do my workshop, and in in uh, in the same time he helps me around the place. But not not I, I never use professional fixers, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe you know I think in my photography it's a good thing to lose in time. I don't try to 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 be productive in a very specific period oh, of yeah, time. So what, what I when I ask. lose time, you know, I don't really need a fixer. I just need to be in a place and go around like these stray dogs, you know, just, just losing time. Just, uh, just, I mean, that's me. That's what I'm talking I mean, it's not, it's not for, it's not the advice, it's for others. I mean, it's just me. I try to describe what I'm, what I'm doing, you know. It is the important way to communicate to other people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the, the, even if you don't speak the language. I don't need to speak the language. I mean, it's very easy to communicate with people. I think after so many years, when I ask myself, it's only because the pleasure to be in a place. I mean, it's like, uh, like you know, I think what I'm looking for, it's, uh, it's a kind of originality of a place and the people and the kind of innocence. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I need mm -hmm. for to live better, you know? I'm looking for originality from the people and the places and from innocence. That's what I'm, I'm looking now in Africa, for example. Yeah. I go a lot in Africa and South mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm still lo look around for this innocence, you yes. know? It's like the essence of the place you are trying to extract. Uh, or the feeling. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe sometimes I'm far from the reality of the place. Mm -hmm. I live in a, in, a, in a kind of relation between me and the place. It's not necessarily objective what I'm saying and what I'm doing. It's very subjective, I think. It's my experience in a certain place. And what I'm, I'm looking always the same things. And this is the originality of the place and the people and mm -hmm. the innocence of the place and the people. That's, that's in and few words, I mean, that's what I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. And again, about the practical the way you work, like, like are you a workaholic, I would ask? I mean, when you are on the, when you are not on assignment, we use that word yeah, yeah. usually, but meaning that you are out shooting. Uh, how hard do you work? Because I was uh, assisting Alex Webb when he was working in Istanbul, and I was really amazed. I know how hard they work, but it was really amazing how hard he works. Like, I was going to pick him up from the hotel at 7 o'clock, expecting him to come down from his room. He was coming in from the outside because he had been out shooting already for three hours. So uh, Yeah, there were periods in my life that I was like this. Yeah, There are other periods that I'm more, more relaxed, you know, depends. Depends of the place, depends of my, my situation. I mean, but generally, yeah, I think it's... Uh, you know, even when, for example, I remember for many years, you know, not anymore, but for many years, I remember to have dreams about the next day shooting, you know, okay. and uh, have a kind of uh, dreaming about uh, the space, about what the people are doing, and, uh, and uh, trying to, not photographing, but try to compose in my mind during my sleep, so before, the night before, 
So I was 100% in this. Training while. Yeah. Dream, kind of, would they come through then, your yeah, dreams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I remember in the first years, for example, uh, to be familiar with a camera, you know, I photographed television, you know, mm -hmm. just to be familiar with a camera, with a lens, you know. So I think it's a, it's a kind of... Uh, Living with photography. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's photography. It's not my profession only. It's my life. Mm -hmm. I think so mm -hmm. and uh, That's what I <clears throat> I do for do you, For for pleasure and I do for living mm -hmm. Do you edit on the field on no you don't you I never do, do all your shooting never do that okay. And I don't I don't even do it when I come back. Maybe I need some time, you know to for example with Magnum, I mean, I have stories that they are in my in my computer more than three, four years. You know, I never give to them. So I, I, it, I, I need time, pass some time, and maybe I combine things. And uh, so, it's I'm not very fast on that. I'm very slow, I think. And you said you you were spend a lot of time to get accustomed to the camera and so on, but you your career. Uh, has spent a long time, like going from film to digital, and yeah. how was that transition for you? Okay, uh, I guess you are shooting digital now. Now, of course, yes. The last, uh, the last seven years. And mm -hmm. you are taking, you are changed to black and white, from black and white to. It was the same time. Yeah. The same time when I I, 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 I changed from film to digital. I changed from black and white mm -hmm. to color. And how did I, that I always thought to do color in the past, mm -hmm. but I never decided. And one of the reasons was that uh, technically it was not very easy for me. You know, mm -hmm. I live in Greece, no good labs. You know, I have to send the films to Switzerland or to States. You know, I like Kodachrome, so mm -hmm. it was very big, uh, uh, a very big a adventure control, yeah. to do color. Uh, sometimes that uh, professionally I had to do some color, it was a disaster because the lab, the, the films, they came back from the lab and they were terrible. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of dust, a lot of uh, bad mm -hmm. quality. So when when the digital came and I start to photograph digitally, the result was great. You know, mm -hmm. I I was so enthusiastic about the color in digital mm -hmm. because uh, it was so easy and. Uh, uh, you can just put it in the computer and you have it, you know? You can control so, everything. Yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, I decide, I mean, black and white was a very long story for me. And uh, I was think. Uh, I'm, I remember that I was thinking that um, I was a little bit tired of black and white. Mm -hmm. I knew how to do good photos. It became a little bit repetitive for me. It was, it's like, you know, Color was something like uh, new in my life. So it, I was very curious about color. I have a lot of things to learn. I knew nothing about color. So mm -hmm. when I start, when I bought my first camera, uh, it was a Canon Mark II. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and uh, all the years before, I used a Leica, right. you know, yeah. with uh, 35. But I had no the money to buy. No, I felt that the M8 was not a good camera for me. Mm -hmm. So I was waiting. When the M9 came, you know, I just I bought it right away. So I was so happy with uh, with the same lens as before. You know, the yes. 35 in a new body and without film. You know, go around without mm -hmm. film was really uh, <laughs> amazing. Yes. You know, without film, you can imagine go around with 100 or 200 yeah. films every time. Only in the two or three cuts. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. I mean, mm -hmm. I really feel very nice with digital. I th I don't understand the people that they go back to, to to films now. I really don't understand because I find the quality of digital amazing, really good. But there, there has there must have been a period where you uh, switching over to digital where the M9 didn't exist. So did you use? No, uh, I I bought I bought uh, my first Canon in 2009, I think. Mm -hmm. And 2010, I bought the M9. So just one year without a Leica. Ah, okay. Just one year. So after I, I start to I start to do color, only color. I don't do any more black you and white. You don't do any black and white. No. I don't do any more okay. film, any more black and Did white. Did you try uh, Leica black and white body? No. No. Mm -hmm. no. Which is difficult, Co color or black and white? What do you mean difficult? Uh, difficult for process to image. 
or composition? I never, I never ask or, these things mm -hmm. to myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I decide seven years ago to do only color, and mm -hmm. the last seven years I do only color. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, how much I, I think in the beginning I was really ignorant about color. So slowly by slowly, I start to learn things, and that was very interesting for me to be again in the process of learning, you know? Because in black, for example, the dark room, for me, the dark, I was very good in dark room, you know, but the dark room was so terrible for me. Yeah. I don't really like it, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't like mm -hmm. to work in the dark mm -hmm. and all this, At you know. Long time. Uh, <laughs> I had to do it, you know? It was my, I was obliged to do uh -huh. it because that was the only way. But when I, I, I find out the digital, mm -hmm. I was so happy that I don't go anymore in dark room, mm -hmm. you know? I destroyed my dark room, yeah. I, you know. It was great, you know, it was a new era in my photography, so I enjoy it, I think. And now I, I go around with the body and that's it. And uh, a couple of cards, a couple of batteries, that's it, you know. You don't that's need, uh, I never, I never, I was always uh, not very confident with, uh, with the big cameras and many lenses and things like this. So uh, I'm very happy with digital, to say the truth. And I think technically it's amazing. The color and the black and white. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now there are so many filters. So you can do anything you want. I mean, you can do black and white and, you can even and get the result. To films, yeah. No, it, the result can be much better yes. than any film, any printer, yes. you know? Do you do your own post processing on digital? Do you yeah, yeah, do yeah. Your, yeah, do yeah. yeah I don't do much, you know, just a little, just a little of corrections, that's all. Not mm -hmm. much. Most not very much Photoshop. Most photographers try multimedia with sound or with video. Did you try it or what do you think about it? No, I, I, don't, I, I don't feel the need mm. to do something like this, you know. I think for me, still photography, I'm, uh, I have a lot of curiosity about how I develop my photography, you know. How when I learn something new, I try to do it in, realis in reality and uh, I do, go, do again and uh, so it's, I think it's the fact that I change from black and white to, for, to color, it gives me a new, a new place for, for working, you know, a new place of, uh, um, uh, a new experience. So I, I live this experience now, I think, and I'm very happy about that. And now you're uh, shooting in many different countries, yeah. much wider uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with yeah. variety. Yeah, the last years, yeah. And does that have something to do with uh, your shooting digital? I mean, it corresponds, right? The time you switch to digital, you also maybe, like switch countries almost. Maybe it has to do with my teaching. It has to do with, for example, I started teaching because I thought uh, <clears throat> I need to sponsor my trips and my photography. So there are different ways to do it. Or you have to do uh, assignments, mm -hmm. or you have to teach, or you have to have a rich father or rich uncle. Mm -hmm. So in my case, uh, I've, for me, it was much more interesting and much more easy to teach. So that means I meet with the people every evening, and during the day, I'm completely free to do what I want. So I you photograph myself. Uh, your students, so to say, don't follow you, or you're no, not no, directing no. them while shooting. I find it, I find it not very educational to go together with the students out, and uh, because all the students they tend to imitate you. So you photograph, and they do like monkeys; they do the same yes. thing. So I think it's stupid. Mm -hmm. You have to give to the stu I mean, you have to talk. You have to see what they are doing, I mean, to see their portfolio in the beginning, and after, try to find for each of them to find a, a valid way to send him out, you know? And in the evening, when he comes, you see what he did and you try to correct him. I think this is my, my educational system. And I think it works very well. So it's not a shooting workshop, it's an editing no, workshop, exactly, basically. exactly, it's an editing workshop, yeah. It's not a shooting at all. I don't really believe in that, in shooting workshops. I don't believe in that. But then you have your the time remaining for your own shooting. I, I think, but that was the reason why I started uh, teaching. You know, the reason mm -hmm. was that to to finance my projects, to finance my my photography. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> in that way, I I, I finance my, my trips, and at the same time I have plenty of time to do what I want. So it's, uh, but that's, you still that's needed to choose the destinations. So I choose the destinations. How did you do that? I choose the destinations because I'm interested to go in a place. 
So when I, I decide, I put it in, uh, in my side, and mm -hmm. some people, they want to come. Mm -hmm. So it's done, you know. Uh, it, if I, I want to go back, there are some few destinations every year that I do for not exactly commercial reasons, but um, for example, Cuba. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not so much interesting anymore for Cuba. I've been many times there. Mm -hmm. But I still do it because there are there still there. yeah there's still some, and there is nice life there you know you go for holidays in a way I mean <laughs> I photograph in the same time but in the same time you have a nice nice time you know so you go for holidays in Caribbean why not I mean uh, and you have some some people where else do you go in Africa you go to uh, I go to I used to go to Ethiopia a lot I go to Ghana now a lot. Uh, I go to Cuba, I, go, I used to go to Mexico, Guatemala this year. Uh, I want to go to Colombia. Um, in Africa, I want to go to Senegal. Uh, I've been to Tanzania, I've been to, mm -hmm. to Kenya, I've been to Egypt. Yeah. In these places, do you travel around or are you based in a city um, or a village or whatever? They are, for example, now in Cuba, last month, I, I, I did two workshops in Cuba. One was in Havana and Trinidad only. Mm -hmm. And the other one was um, a road trip, you know, from Havana arriving to Santiago and Baracoa. That means every day, every second day to travel three, four hundred kilometers and go on and on. So there depends. Of the most of the time, what I, the most productive for the people and for me, it's when you stay in the same place, not when you travel too much. Mm -hmm. Because when you travel, you lose a lot of time yes. traveling. And uh, but when you are in the same place and visiting the same space, the same places, this gives you photograph. I mean, gives you. It's more productive, you know, not only for me but for the students too. And you can repeat exactly and yes. go to the same places. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's a very big difference when you visit a place and you are a tourist or you are a photographer. Mm -hmm. For example, when you are a tourist, when you visit a place, when you visit a square, for example, somewhere in Havana or somewhere else, as a tourist, you don't want to go back in the same place. It's boring. Mm -hmm. But as a photographer, the second or the third or the fourth time is more productive than the first time. So it always. depends how you do it. I mean, if you behave as a photographer or if you behave as a tourist. So I try to convince my students that be a photographer means go to places many times, not only just one time as you go in a museum. You know, it's not it's not that the point. You know, it's to go again and again and uh, try to find. The place with your attitude, you know, with your, what you do there, what you look there, what you waiting to see there, and uh, what, when you meet people, when you meet the same people again, for example, when you go into houses or in the streets, they recognize you and you have another kind of relation. So I think it's a very big difference between be a photographer and be a tourist, you know? Mm -hmm. And what about your own images and own photographs from here? Are they... Uh, are you going to see them in a book? Or yeah, yeah, yeah probably, when I, when I have time, yeah. Uh, okay. When I have time, I'm going to do many books, I think, in, <laughs> yes. the, in the future, yeah. <laughs> but I have many books to do, <laughs> but, you know. But may, then, uh, let me ask you, maybe you don't want to answer this now, but uh, are all these different places you're shooting now, is it part of uh, one big probably, project? Or probably, are they all probably, different? no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know yet. I don't Is there know. something that ties these so. places I think so. I think so, but together. I don't know how to answer to that. I don't. I don't have the answer now. I think it's a, it's a, it's a work in progress. I think. You visit to Turkey several times, many times. Uh, Thirty-two years ago, you yeah. came first. Yeah. Uh, what didn't change in Turkey? You, you're I think it changed a lot, Turkey. I don't know, maybe not so much in the East, for example. Mm -hmm. If you go in small places in the East, it looks the same like mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the big cities, for example, Istanbul, when I came the first time in Istanbul, you were 5 million here. Yeah. Now you are 20 or 20, something. Yes. So it's a big difference mm -hmm. between 5 and 20, mm -hmm. with the good things and bad things, mm -hmm. you know? So 
for me, Turkey, it's not so interesting anymore because I feel I don't photograph too much in Turkey now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is that uh, it's like in Athens, you know, in Greece, I don't photograph anymore mm -hmm. because I need, I don't have any more so much curiosity yeah. about the place. I mean, it's like, you it's know, like it's my well. town. It's my, it's my town, you know, so it's, uh, I'm not very much so curious. But for example, yesterday I photographed a little bit. I found something, even in Istiklal, you know, mm -hmm. I photographed in Istiklal, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Because it's a new yeah. place now almost. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's changed so much. Nothing reminds Istiklal there, you know, yes. it was like uh, 30 years ago. So probably, no, I, I know when you ask something, you want this specific <laughs> answer, but. <laughs> The answers are not always specific, you know? Mm -hmm. They are very, very, not, not very precise, not very in my mind, you know? They are not very precise in my mind. So they are <coughs> very, <coughs> okay. Yeah. And what about uh, now you have spent so much time in the Balkans and now you're in so many different places? I about don't go anymore people. to the Balkans. But about the, the way people react to your shooting, like, I guess it was Where? similar in... Anywhere? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it was similar in Greece and Turkey and Bulgaria, whatever. No, it was similar everywhere. Yeah. Is it the same? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think you don't get are... different kinds of reactions or more... Uh, more there are some differences in places that they are danger, for example. Mm -hmm. For example, in Africa, there are some places, or in South America, there are some dangerous places. I try don't go to danger places because in that case you have to think all the time about your safety and about yeah, all this. So I don't like that. Well. Yeah, I don't like that. So I prefer to go in places that they are, they are quite safe. So in that case, I mean the people. They, for example, one good thing in Cuba is that the people they don't change what they are doing when they feel that the photographer tried to photograph them. They don't change, they don't give a shit. I mean, they, they just go on and do what they do. And this is great. I mean, it's there. For example, in Turkey, I remember it was a big problem the way how the kids, they react. They run after photo. you. Wow, they, they, they start to, to laugh all the time, you know. One of the first words in, in Turkey that I learned was, don't smile, you know, gülme, gülme. <laughs> that's, that's one of the first wo words that I learned to say to the kids so they, so they became like soldiers <laughs> like this after that, you know. Okay. Uh, nowadays, uh, many young photographers or many photographers uh, establish collectives, uh, photography collectives. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are in Magnum Collective. Yeah. Uh, what's the advantage of collective for photographers? I don't know about these collectives yeah. that you talk about. I mean, I can tell you what I what uh, I feel and what I know about Magnum, but mm -hmm. I don't know about what what kind of collectives you talk about. I mean, generally, do you see an advantage in photographers getting together mm -hmm. to run an agency, or uh, I mean, I, I think uh, it's like uh, how does Magnum depends. Help you? Depends. Uh, I mean, uh, Magnum for me. Uh, for example, I, I met a lot of people that I respect photographically. I learn from them, and uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy to be their friend, you know. And uh, from the other side, it's very practical, it's very convenient that the fact that uh, you come from one place like Greece that is completely out of the world and uh, mm -hmm. you can give your stuff and uh, they can be sold anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. I mean, this mm -hmm. is practically, it's very convenient. So mm -hmm. there are good reasons to do that. I mean, if, but generally about uh, collectives, I don't, I'm not, for example, me, I'm not very much a group person, you know. Mm -hmm. I am, uh, I like to be my, by myself, you know. I like to be alone, and uh, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not like uh, like uh, one of a team in a football game or something. I, I don't feel like this, you know. So, but in Magnum, we, you can do something like this. There are some projects that you can do in group, or but everyone, it's a group, but in the same time, you are alone, yes. you know. So it's uh, you have this. This necessarily freedom, I think. Mm -hmm. You have it in Magnum, and that's a great thing in Magnum. I hope it's not going to lose it in the Today in the is future. the 70th birthday yeah, this of Magnum. Year, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, what year did you enter Magnum? I became nominee in 1990. 
90. Mm -hmm. And how was the procedure then? Is it the same as it is now or? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. I mean, uh, when, you, when you, there are different ways to apply. For example, in my case, uh, I met uh, Costa, Costa Manos, mm -hmm. you know, Costa yes. Manos, this Greek American. Greek -American yeah. And uh, I met him through a common friend in Athens. So I saw him, my first photographs and he liked them and he was very nice to me and he said, when you finish something, you send to, to Boston. And, uh, and he said, why you don't, uh, so he, he saw my portfolio to New York at that time. So New York, and, and after he said to me, you want to apply this year? Because uh, I, saw, I, I saw your portfolio to New York and they like it and I think it's a good idea to apply. So I applied in 1990, I was accepted and two years later, I, I, uh, I give another portfolio for these two years. I mean, 92, I became associate. In 94, I became a full member. I mean, there were three exams, let's say. I mean, the mm -hmm. first time, you need 50% plus one. Mm -hmm. The second time, only for two years, the work for two years, you show and you need two-thirds plus one of the votes. And another time, in four years from the first time, you need another time, two-thirds plus one. The second time, I mean, to become associate was the most difficult, I think, because you have only two years and you have to convince the two thirds for only two years of photography. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I guess we are pretty much all they have in mind. But uh, to round up uh, about your on the road project now, is this uh, this is like a this series of. Uh, Workshops, but is it a project in itself? Is is there a main uh, target? <clears throat> uh, the, this pro, this uh, this thing. I mean, the on the road project. I mean, a teaching project. But in the same time, for me, it's not uh, only teaching; it's photographing too. So, uh, this is the tenth year of uh, on the road mm -hmm. this year. Too. So we decide to, for the first time, to do to do a book of the students' work, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I make the selection and I make the, the sequencing and everything. So we do a book in October probably in Berlin and it's going to be internationally distributed, you know, from a publisher in Berlin. What is amazing is that uh, the result, it's so good, it's mm -hmm. so good. Really, I mean, I'm I'm so impressed, you know, from the from the people that uh, that uh, all these years. So I have a lot of work to 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 be to select all those pictures. How you started to, selecting, or do you? I, have... No, I mean, it was a practical problem in the beginning because uh, we had to to, <clears throat> to go on to diff to many people, mm -hmm. you know. So we find a way. I mean, this friend of mine from Berlin that he's um, he helps me a lot in that. He proposed something that is, it was very clever, because it's not easy to keep out people, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, we start with the people that they did from three workshops and more. Mm -hmm. So there are around 20 people that they did more than three workshops. So we include, this time, we include only these people. Because it will be impossible to include yes. everybody. It's impossible. But what about someone who has participated only once or twice but has a great image yeah. <laughs> that you don't uh, want to yeah. miss out it's, on? Uh, it's out. This okay. time it's out. Yeah. But what we plan to do, mm -hmm. it's every year, and then from next year, every year to produce a kind of magazine and book mm -hmm. Catalog. every yeah. year for the people of that year. So this will be more easy. Yes. It's impossible to, to, mm -hmm. to have everything, you know? It's a, it, it, it has to be a kind of, uh, of uh, <clears throat> solution in that, mm -hmm. because it will be impossible, because there are hundreds of people yes. and, and thousands of pictures. I mean, it will be a, a sea of, of uh, a visual sea, you know? It's mm -hmm. impossible to, to, to swim in that sea. And uh, so we had to do that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the quality, I mean, it's really, Mm -hmm. It's really good. I mean, it's, next year I bring you a book and uh, yes, you see yes. it. I it mean, would be very interesting to see that, and it would be very interesting, I think, to see also on the road part two with maybe your images only. So yeah, yeah. we see, we see. No, this my that. my pictures. I don't want to mix my pictures with the pictures not of together, not because they are better. Mm -hmm. Mine. 
Sometimes they are better of my students, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's, not the, it's not that the point. The point is I don't like to put together because it's, uh, it's normal to make comparisons, and mm -hmm. it's not nice, you know, to yes. make this kind of comparisons. So I think I prefer to be out of, of the group mm -hmm. and uh, be alone, and mm -hmm. they are Editor. in the group, oh, you know. Yes, yeah. I think I, I, I do that in, uh, in, uh, in social media, too. I mean, we have, I have an account my account that I put my pictures and there is another account that I put only the pictures of the students, not my pictures, you know. I select them, but I don't put mine. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's good to be, to be in a different, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for thank you guys. coming thank and you. talking to thank us. You. And uh, I'd like to thank all our viewers for watching us. So hopefully next year. Yeah. We'll see I'll bring you the book anyway. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day.